Welcome back to Cooking with Trash. For the special bunch who couldn't figure it out, it's a show where we cook with trash. We gather the perfectly good food found in the dumpsters of local supermarkets and grocery stores and transform it into epic gourmet meals. For those of you in the middle of filing a police report against me, I'd ask that you hear me out. I will agree, a full-grown man should not have to sit through a dumpster. In fact, no one should have to sit through a dumpster. It is ridiculous. Dumpster diving is ridiculous, I will admit it. But what's even more ridiculous is the fact that supermarkets, grocery stores, local businesses, even us at home, are throwing out perfectly good food on a daily basis worldwide. And when you begin to understand that, all of a sudden, dumpster diving becomes a pretty smart thing to do. In the US alone, it is estimated 40% of all food that is produced each year goes to waste. Do you know how many animals' lives are wasted? Do you know how many plants, the very organisms that provide us with oxygen to breathe and food to eat, are cut down only to end up in a dumpster? How many resources, energy, time that is wasted, it's too much. And I don't blame us for not knowing, especially in first world countries, very few people know much about the food industry outside of the grocery store. Where our food comes from and where it goes isn't really a concern, so long as we continue to have a surplus of easy to access food. We'll blindly grab things off the shelves in grocery stores without thinking about where it came from or how it was produced. We'll scrape the scraps that we were too full to eat into the trash without thinking much about where it might end up and how that might affect us as well as the world as a whole. And just so you know, all of that wasted food eventually finds its way into a landfill, where it will slowly rot away and create an immense amount of greenhouse gases and toxins, which then feed into the waterways, the air that we breathe, the soil that we use to grow. Basically, it feeds right back into us. So it's easy to look the other way and pretend like it isn't happening, but unfortunately it is, and the longer we stay in the dark, the more damage we'll cause. And another sad reality is that even with all of this food waste, there's still a huge number of people in the world who are food insecure. Feeding America is a network of 200 food banks that cover the entire span of the US. They're essentially doing what I'm doing just without having to jump into a dumpster. They've managed to team up with local supermarkets and grocery stores to collect all of that food that would have otherwise been wasted and prevent it from actually hitting the dumpster. They store all of that food into their food banks, which then distributes that food amongst the food insecure communities. They've estimated 46 million people a year turn to their food banks for aid. That's about the population of Spain. And yet here I am on a nightly basis guaranteed to pull enough food out of the dumpster to feed a freaking army. So for those of you who are still skeptical about the whole dumpster diving thing, I encourage you to do a bit of research, find out what's really going on and make a difference. We all can and it starts right here. So rant out of the way, we move on to the show. Before we cook any of the food, we make sure it's thoroughly washed as, well, it was in a dumpster. This includes yourself, although I'd recommend using a shower if you have access to one. It would seem as if I don't. It's also important with things like fruit and vegetables to sift through the good and the bad. Mold and bacteria can grow pretty quickly the minute it hits the dumpster, and the last thing you want is to spend the rest of the night gripping the toilet bowl for dear life. So here's what we have. All of the food seen was collected from a single dumpster in a single night. Pretty crazy, right? Snap peas, cilantro, asparagus, jasmine rice, spinach, onions, peppers, coconut oil, bread, strawberries, sugar, eggs, blackberries and blueberries, orange juice, crescent rolls, trail mix, sweet potatoes, potatoes, oranges, broccoli, parmesan cheese, cheese, and mushrooms. Round one. For our first meal, we're going to be making this little stir-fry beauty. We'll be using the cilantro, spinach, snap peas, broccoli, asparagus, peppers, and onion, mushrooms, jasmine rice, and the coconut oil. What we'll need includes aluminum foil, a cooking spoon, measuring beakers, a chopping board, and our little baking dish we retrieved from our last dive. We'll start things off by setting the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and then pour one out for the homie using the jasmine rice in place of a 40 ounce bottle of beer. Next we'll add this many waters, a pinch of salt, some pepper, 
and then cover with aluminum foil, place it in the oven and let it bake for 15 minutes or so. Next we'll be tapping a funky rhythm with our cooking spoon and then we'll get a pot of boiling water going. We'll add a pinch of salt, throw our broccoli in and leave it to cook until tender. Next up, snap peas. We'll start by removing whatever that thing is and then set them aside for now. We can start preparing our bell peppers by removing the seeds and stems. For the stoners following along, you should find this process very easy. Next, we'll chop the peppers into thin slices. For the stoners following along, you should find this process very difficult. We'll set our chopped peppers aside and then start preparing our mushrooms. Remove the stalk like so, and then cut the mushroom caps into thin slices, even if your knife skills jeopardize your safety. We'll remove the skin of the onion next and slice it into thin slices. Throw the onion into the mix with the peppers and then move on to the cilantro. The parts that look like an alien's bowel movement have most likely started to spoil, so we'll pick through until we're left with just a nice and fresh looking cilantro. We'll drain the broccoli, again exposing the camera to heat it's most likely not built to tolerate, and once drained we can then organize our veggies into a pretty picture. We do a traditional rice dance to assure the safe passage of the rice as it's nuked at 350 degrees. Once the dance is complete, we remove the rice from the oven, peel back the foil and fluff it up. We'll then get the veggies frying, starting with a dollop of coconut oil in a heated pan. We'll add the mushrooms, a bit of salt, pepper, and flip. Once the mushrooms have cooked, we'll throw them in a bowl and add the onions and peppers to the pan. Salt, pepper, you know what's good. Once the onions and peppers have cooked down, we'll throw the spinach on top and add more salt and pepper. We'll let that cook down and then scrape it into a bowl for the time being. Snap peas and broccolis are up next. Chuck them in the pan, salt, pepper, mix, and then add to the rest of the vegetables. Next, we'll chop the asparagus into chunks, throw them in the pan, more salt. Christ on a bike, we're gonna have high blood pressure by the end of this meal. Add the asparagus to the veggie mix, and then we'll get our eggs a crack in for the stir fry. Dump the rice into the pan and then pour our eggs on top. Sorry, I meant the eggs. Please try to refrain from using your eggs. Mix it around until the eggs are fully cooked and then pour all of the veggies in. Continue mixing, add the cilantro, mix a little more. And drum roll, please. Okay, who the hell hired this guy? I said drum roll, not craptastic violin solo. Now that my ears are bleeding, here's a really quirky 360 degree shot of the final meal. Which leads us on to... Round two. Moving on, we're going to be making a jam using all of that fruit that we gathered. We'll pour our sugar in with the fruit, add a bit of water, turn up the stove, and leave our fruit to boil down. Next, we're making a baked potato side dish, so we'll peel the potatoes, dice them into chunks, and then do the same to an onion. We'll add a bit of olive oil, some salt, pepper, throw it all into a baking dish, and stick that bad boy in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 minutes or so. Seeing as we had started making a nice jam with the fruit, we thought French toast would be a great way to complement it. After cracking the eggs into a bowl, we add some sugar, water, a pinch of salt, and beat it off. We'll add a clump of coconut oil to our portable cooker and start soaking the bread in the eggs. Pop the bread in the cooker and flip after a couple of minutes. After 40 minutes, our jam and potatoes should be good to go. And? No. No, don't you even think- Okay. Oh, that's real funny. So here it is, French toast, red, black, and blueberry jam with a side of roasted taters. Honestly though, this has been my favorite meal that we've made so far. It makes IHOP look like an international house of pancake, wait, what? And for those complaining about the compost, well guess what, we were composting the whole time. <laughs> Dump the compost into our compost bin and then start packing up all of the excess food to drop off at the local food pantry. All right, what up? <laughs> All right, what's up, party people? I have just dropped off all of the food at the food pantry. We went to a different one this time, one that's much closer to uh, to the house, so it saves us the, the long drive. Although, in saying that, I'd like to start distributing the excess food to multiple different food banks um, as we go, because uh, I like to spread the wealth. Very straightforward as well, just went in, I said I had a bunch of food and they sorted through the food that they could and couldn't uh, take. Uh, so things like the, the rice that we had opened up and put into a, a different container, that was a no-go. And um, the trail mix as well, it, it had already been open. Um, I did have an entire thing of the, the bean casserole, little frozen thingies. Those were good, so yeah, mission accomplished. 
All right, that's all, folks. Thanks so much for watching. We appreciate it. If you'd like to help us get the message out there, then please like, subscribe, follow, share, all that good stuff. You can also head over to our Patreon, which is linked below, and help fund the project. All the money donated goes straight back into Cooking with Trash and will help us improve the content and fund future projects. So peace out, Girl Scouts. We'll catch you next time.